Now, this is Tess. She is 12 years old. And that makes her about 84 in our language. Just a while ago, it wasn't Tess that me out at all. You heard that. Things were looking pretty grim for Tess until she went on a health kick. I don't mean lying in a, a mud bath at uh, Camp Eden. We all know the way to a pet's heart is through its stomach. And Tess owes her miracle recovery to a completely natural diet. According to my next guest, all pets should be on this particular diet. Would you please welcome vet Tom Lonsdale. Welcome, Tom. Um, just in case, when I was introducing, talking about Tess, we heard the meow, so we'd better introduce the cat as well, eh? That's Blackjack. Blackjack? And he'll take his turn later, I think. All right, we'll, we'll come to the, to the two of them in a moment, but ideally, what do you think is the diet for dogs and cats? Well, ideally, they should be able to select the diet for themselves. And they if can't. We cast a, they can't. Mm -hmm. But um, if we imagine what it would be like in the natural environment where these animals evolved, then they would be out there determining what was best for their needs. And so if we imagine an ecosystem, I cast your mind over to Africa, and you've got the tall canopy all the way through to the smallest herbs at the, at the bottom. And you've got animals living at all levels in that ecosystem. So you've got giraffes selecting the food they want, elephants selecting their food, which is whole trees, and on down. Geronauts climb up on their hind legs and so on. These little critters tend to be ground-dwelling carnivores. And they partly learn and partly, partly instinctively know that meat on the bone is the food for them. And so all their waking day is devoted to securing enough food so that they get chemicals sufficient for their bodily needs. So they need the chemicals. And let me say that the chemicals are the same for all of us, just to digress here. Right. The elephant eating the trees is eating the same chemicals, the same proteins, amino acids, carbohydrates, and so on for his needs. Just a different food, same chemicals. But the physical form, now we've made yeah. a big difference here, the physical form of the food is vitally important. And these little critters know that their physical, the physical form of their food should be meaty bones. Now, if we talk about the, ca the carnivores, which are canines, they will mostly catch their own prey, but they're happy enough to eat carrion as well, and scavengers. So All if right. they come across a carcass that some other animals eat, and then they'll chew into it. So in essence, what you've done with Tess, then, is uh, you've taken her off uh, canned dog food and all the other packaged dog foods, and basically you said, give her bones, feed the dog bones. That's what we now do, yes, to recreate something of what she ought to have been having right from the outset, and restore her to something passing for health. We so what are, the, what are the benefits in the case of bones as against other food they're getting, you know, packaged food? What are the benefits, are the benefits of bones? of the dog, yeah. Bones have it almost medicinal benefits. They're just so integral to the, the diet of the natural carnivore in the natural environment. They're bone processes. They recycle bones. So their whole ecology, their whole biophysiology is organised to process bone from this end to that end, and we'll right. show you the product from that end in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I think we've seen the product, we see plenty of that, but... Uh, no, 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 I'll, I'll introduce you to some different product that oh, you're right. perhaps not quite so familiar with. Well, okay. So, at this end, it's vitally important that they have the physical form to massage and clean up the, the working parts. These are the tools of trade of the carnivore. Right. They're going out to kill and, and wreak havoc amongst the herbivores. Right. They've got to keep these working parts in pretty good order. Even if they just, the only herbivores they get are in the backyard of, a, of, a, of someone's garden? It still remains the same. So you, you say that we've, we've actually, we've messed about with Mother Nature by actually giving canned food and packaged food and so on, we're messing around with Mother Nature. It's a terrible affront to the needs of our animals. All right, well, if we, if we must see <coughs> the, uh, what finishes up at the end, let's have it, because this is pertinent to your, to your story, isn't it? Well, okay, that, that's the end product of um, either Patricia, Jess, or, or Scarlett, I'm not sure which, um, produced this. Now, that is powdered bone right. in pelletized form, and that's come through the dogs. Now, that's what we used to see, without being crude, that's what we used to see a lot on footpaths and streets around Australia. You don't see that much now. You see different coloured stuff, don't that's you? Right. It's, it's like melted chocolate. And okay. It gets between your toes. And oh. Oh, but, oh, <laughs> no, no, we don't enjoy it. No, obviously, this is, uh, we're not being crude. We're just, this is the fact of the matter. You're saying that what you put in the top end comes out the bottom end, and it, it right. ain't normally this now. That's right, and it should okay. be. And all that's right. vital for their well-being right all the way through the gas. Now, could you have right. saved Tess, do you think, if you'd have stayed on, on sort of the, the normal uh, food as against going back to bones? We could have patched her up, in a manner of speaking. And right. in the old days, we would probably have put our emphasis on all the other problems that she has. She's got a really bad ticker. If we had the stethoscope here, you'd hear it just slushing around in the chest. Yes. She's got a bad liver. She's got a mammary tumour. She did have a bad skin, bad ears. And she had a foul mouth. 
Now, in the old days, when we were really set on fixing things and we got this mentality, oh, we must fix the problem, and we would have prescribed all these pills for the heart and done this for the liver and prescribed all manner of potions. Right. Increasingly, we're switching the emphasis and saying, no, it comes from the mouth. She had a foul mouth. She had this condition we know... You don't mean swearing, do you? Oh, look, so rancid, you wouldn't want to be in the same room. <laughs> Is that right? Room. <laughs> okay. want to be in the same room. What about those, again, it's the old folklore, the myth that, you know, chicken bones, for example, get stuck in dogs' uh, throats, and so we shouldn't feed them chicken bones. Well, you're right, partially. If those chicken bones are cooked, then that would be the case. In the old days, of course, the only chook bone that was given to the dog was the cooked one at Christmas lunch, or maybe if you were affluent, then you ate it for Sunday lunch. So raw chicken bones are good for dogs? Perfect, because these are ground-dwelling carnivores. And they run around, and if there's a, a chook sitting on a clutch of eggs there, they're not going to pass that up. They're going to say, thank you very much, free meal. I don't have to chase the bunny. I've got the, got the chook here. All right, what about the cat? We, well, should we get Blackjack out, or is that...? Yeah, yeah why not? Will I, will you, I you take Tess? Test. Okay. Okay. Test. okay. Yeah. Now, Jeff, don't make any of those noises on your machine, please. 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 Anyway. Okay. Now, you're the same principle for... <laughs> same principle for Blackjack. Same principle for Blackjack. Now, Jeff, stop please. that. He's making noises that no one can hear apart from the cat. Yeah, there he is. So, the same principle, of course, for Blackjack. He, he's a ground-dwelling carnivore, and That's we all know about cat, feral, feral cats out there in the bush and the havoc that they create amongst the wildlife. They like bunny as well, of course, so oh. a lot of those feral cats out there are eating rabbits. Okay. And many people here will relate to that and how the cat brings the rabbit home and eats the whole goddamn so, lot. So, I mean, you're, you're obviously very serious about this. I mean, as a veterinarian, you, you're saying go down to the butchers and get bones. Forget all the canned stuff, and et cetera, et cetera. Go and get them bones. Feed bones. Raw feed, bones. Feed bones, yes. A little bit of meat on for the cat, not so much for the dog. All right. What size bones for the cat? According to the size of the well, dog? Well, or, or according to the size of your animal. Now, ideally, of course, that they would eat small birds, small rats, rabbits, that sort of thing. The nearest we can get to that is probably chook wings, chook necks, whole fish from the fish market. Donner a kilo. Old dogs, new tricks. I mean, even old dogs, you can change the diet after this long. She's an example. Yes. Yeah. Takes, she might even provide us with a bit of a display and eat a bone today, although, of course, the lights might put her off. Okay. But we, well, we, we've got some here. Tess's mum, Dale, is there. Have you seen a remarkable change, Dale? In, yes, I have. In Tess? In, especially in her sleeping. She used to be a dog that barked and cried a lot at night, and now she sleeps quite soundly. Does she? Okay. You, you hadn't given up on her at that stage, but you were oh, no, really no. desperate. <laughs> All right. Well, I, well I'm, the pet foods are going to hate us, aren't they? Pet food company. Well, they're going to have to face up to the reality that what they've been doing is perhaps not, not the fair oh, thing. Sorry. Sorry, Tess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it's... No, I didn't drop the dog, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> what I should say is she has no teeth in her upper jaw, folks. So all the teeth have been removed in the upper jaw, and yet she'll still tackle those wings. All right. And this fella, if I can just demonstrate, he's lost his front canines at the top there. He was only four years of age when his teeth were so bad, his mouth rancid. Like the 85% of other animals out there, we've got 85% prevalence of this condition, right? All right. And you think the, w the way back is to, or you were saying, the way back is, uh, is to go well, feed him bones. There's the evidence. He had his teeth pulled out and then fed on bones. Feed him bones. <laughs> Look at her. Yes. Yes, don't you ever feed this dog? <laughs> Thank you, Tom, very much indeed. Would you please thank Tom Lonsdale? And...